Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalatu Wassalamu Ala Rasulillah. For praises for Allah, peace and blessings upon His last and final messenger, upon His family, His companions, and all those who follow Him up until the day of resurrection. So we have our brother Sabur here. Uh, welcome, brother Sabur. Nice to meet you. And he has just delivered a talk on the issue of this evolution undermined God. Now we're going to. I'm going to conduct an interview with him and ask him some questions, some burning questions we will have. So we'll start. Yeah. So first question, brother Sabur, is. It is claimed that there is an overwhelming amount of evidence in support of the theory of evolution. What is your response to this? Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The first thing I want to do is explain that whenever scientists say there is overwhelming evidence for this particular thing, we shouldn't just go with a popular understanding. We should understand what they're saying. So what they're actually saying in this context is this. As, I'm going to break down the question. Assuming methodological naturalism, which is that everything has a naturalistic explanation, Darwin's theory is the theory that makes the most sense according to the data. A alternative to that may be neo-Lamarckian evolution, maybe neo-mutationism or whatever. But all of them still would have aspects which contradict Islamic theology. So what they're basically saying is, look, if we assume methodological naturalism, this is a theory which we believe fits the data uh, better than other theories. That's all they're saying. They're not saying it's absolutely true. They're not saying this disproves, you know, this or that. What they're saying is, within science, based upon our assumptions, this is the theory which makes the most amount of sense. Okay. That's fine. Um, it's said that the human genome is 98.6% identical to that of a chimp. 85% identical to that of a mouse and 50% identical to that of a fruit fly. How can this be explained in any other way other than the fact that we descended from a common uh, ancestor? Okay, good question. This is basically a question about homology. Now, here what's basically happened is there's two things that have happened without realizing it. There's an assumption which is made that similarities are due to common descent. That's an assumption. You can leave that as an assumption and that's it. But if you say if a few words further, you say, we assume similarities are due to common descent. Oh my God, look similarities, therefore common descent is true. In a literal sense, that's actually circular reasoning. So if someone wants to say, there's percentages between human beings and chimpanzees which are similar, and we are assuming common ancestry, that is an assumption. Nothing wrong with that. That's just what they do scientifically. But if someone says, no, it's true, it's literally true, because similarities are due to common descent, Similarities exist, therefore similarities are due to common descent, that's circular reasoning. The other thing is that similarities is a very tricky thing. If two organisms have a similarity, if somebody wants to maintain that means they're literally related in an absolute sense, then they'd have a huge problem explaining homoplasy. Homoplasy is where we have similarities at a biochemical, anatomical and chemical level, uh, and genetic level of course, that is not due to common ancestry. We have extraordinarily similar DNA between uh, certain parts of the bat's um, uh, genome and also the, uh, uh, the whale. They both use echolocation. That's not due to common ancestry. That's uh, homoplasy. And we have loads of examples of homoplasy. So if somebody wants to, just the upshot is, the summary is, if someone wants to say, we are assuming common ancestry and we're assuming similarities due to common descent, I wouldn't object to that. But if someone wants to go further and say, it's true, literally, and therefore the Qur'an is wrong, that's when I would point out these discrepancies. Okay. Okay, um, I think we had this question before, but um, does the belief in human evolution contradict the Qur'anic account of the origins of man? Yes, it does. But like I mentioned before, human evolution has many different meanings. In some aspects it does, in some aspects it doesn't. But human uh, ancestry it does. But you have to do epistemic weighing between the Qur'an and science. Then you have to say, okay, look, it's a probabilistic framework with assumptions, with disputes. We have the Qur'an, believe in the Qur'an for these reasons. We can accept this as a working model, but we won't accept it. We won't change our theological beliefs because of this particular view. Okay, so, okay. is the theory of evolution used as a tool of propaganda for the spread of atheism? And if so, how is, the, how is that done? It's done through... It, whether it's done or not is not a question. It's how... Effective is it? It's very effective because people think evolution atheism. The thing is synonymous. It's like saying Muslim and Iman or something. Yeah? It's, it's like the same thing. Um, but it's not. Uh, uh, the God delusion, uh, popular books like The Blind Matchmaker, they keep repeating the same narrative. 
you know, uh, the design argument has blown, been blown out of the water because of Darwin and so on and so forth. But this is not the case academically. This is a popular understanding. Okay. okay. Uh, is the scientific methodology used to determine the accuracy of a theory today flawed or accurate? Well, it depends on a the particular theory. So you can't just say generally. Okay, were Charles Darwin's claims original and how did they differ, if not at, if at all, from claims in evolution that were made before his time? There was some original thinking, but there was, in terms of the history of life, a lot of it was from the ancient Greeks. Okay. Why is Darwin held up in such esteem and reverence today? He's the first one to come up with a naturalistic theory of biology. Okay. What three books would you re recommend on further understanding of this topic of the theory of evolution? I would say not three books. I would say you have to read the, the, the new book, Inshallah, Failed Hypothesis, because sometimes when you read a book, it may be taking a particular angle. Another book is taking another angle. This is a synthesis. This is taking all that information and sticking it into one book. So Failed Hypothesis, which is going to be out in April this year, 2018. Inshallah. Okay. Um, uh, important question. You mentioned that uh, you don't believe in intelligent de design and creationism. Now, what does that mean in your... In, in that basically a... means do not take theories like intelligent design and stick them in science and then try to use them to challenge Darwinian evolution, Lamarckian evolution or whatever. Because that's not the way that science works. Science only works by methodological naturalism using natural effects being explained by natural causes. What do you understand from what's your understanding of intelligent design? How do you, you know? Uh... Well, intelligent design today is synonymous with the intelligent design theory, which is a rival to evolutionary theory. That's what I'm referring to. In terms of not intelligent, because I don't like to use the word intelligent design. The idea of design, that there is design philosophically, of course, I believe in that. Mm -hmm. So Muslims obviously, uh, you know, might be concerned about. They try to reconcile, you know, the Quran with science, and you know, the, uh, you, the you maybe not made it so clear your position on, you know, human chimp evolution. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, yeah. human chimp evolution. I take a simple view: the science is based on a probabilistic framework, which has assumptions and there's conceptual disputes on every level. The Quran claims, I believe, according to an orthodox understanding, human chimp ancestry is not true. So I can accept this as a working model of science, just like I would have accepted the steady state model, but I won't accept it within my theology. So I'll accept that this is what the scientists believe happened based upon this, but I won't accept it as literally true. And there's no conflict there. Uh, yes? Let's uh, do a summary. Maybe I can summarize and finish. So can we have your last thoughts? Okay. One thing which I really want Muslims to understand is that Allah, the first word of the Quran that he revealed was Iqra, read. One of the reasons why there's so much confusion on this topic is either people don't read, don't understand, or if they do read and understand, they do it in such a superficial way, they become even more confused than, is, than if they hadn't read anything at all. So what we need to do is this, always, whenever we're looking at something, Try to understand their worldview. Now, we know ourselves as Muslims that if we look back in our history, we have giants. We have giants like Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And when he dealt with a particular view, he never attacked a, like for example, when he was refuting certain philosophers or, or, or the atheists. He wouldn't attack the atheist view, the mulhid view, based on ignorance. He would know what they're talking about. Then he would go to their assumptions and he'd rip them up. That's what he would do, and that's actually what someone should be doing. The danger today is people talk about topics with a very superficial understanding. And this is something that we need to stop doing. Yes, of course. So, the Prophet wasallam said, if you do not thank the people, you do not thank Allah. So I'd like to thank the beacons of sanctity uh, organization and also the Birmingham ISOC and brother the Sneef and all the brothers involved in this because at the end of the day we're all as one as an ummah this event would not be possible this video would not be possible many things that we're doing would not be possible unless we were all working together so for the sake of Allah we should all work together and I'd like to thank or thank all the brothers involved and sisters exactly.